Welcome back, John. It's good to be back together again for another episode. We have been talking a lot about different kinds of business owner situations and how we how they can be resolved and what kinds of things advisors can and should be doing in order to in order to get good outcomes for their clients. And maybe today I think you and I want to pivot a little bit, maybe turn our attention on to the advisor specifically and what they can be doing to maybe do a better job, uh, be a better advisor for lack of another way to say it, or uh, or have better client relationships. And so for business owners who might listen, these are things that they want to look for in their most trusted advisors. But well, let's, I think we're primarily going to speak about and to the advisor audience here to say, what have we learned about being good advisors from all the work that we did and all of the you know thousands of planning projects that we have participated in sort of directly or indirectly? Is that, do I have that right for today? You have that exactly right. Perfect. Well, I think you brought a couple of questions with you. So why don't you start and we'll see where it goes. So I would like to start at the very beginning of any kind of a planning process. And that's when probably our first meeting with a potential client or maybe an existing client. But uh, let's assume that, the, that all you know about the owner is that she has an interest in doing some kind of planning. They've set the appointment with you to say, I'd like to talk to you about some planning ideas I've got or something like that. So how do you proceed with that initial meeting? What do you want to know? And and what do you ask? Sure, and there's so many different ways that that can go, as you know, but you do have to kind of go into it with a game plan so that you don't seem, you know, spaced out or unprepared, mm -hmm. right? And if, and I do think it's, you know, if the only information that an advisor has about the person that they're meeting with next. Maybe they came from a referral. Maybe they just randomly, this has happened many times, randomly um, approached or contacted the advisor because of the advisor's marketing that they do to the business community. So the advisor just doesn't know what the topic of the conversation is going to be. Planning. Right, mm -hmm. something about planning, something about a business, something about an owner. Okay, fine, so you get to the meeting and these are kind of hard to do because they're a little cold. You don't know what kind of value this person is looking for. You don't know what they're trying to get out of it. And I think it doesn't work especially well to start with, you know, so, you know, what is it that you, you know, what is it that you want from me is, I find not, I've tried that. It's not a great way to start the conversation because I think a lot of clients are not able to articulate that especially well. They don't not, they know what they want, but they don't know how to say it in a way that's helpful. So instead, maybe we are starting a conversation with, well, I understand that you own a business very first thing that most of us are going to do. And this came up in a program uh, that that we were in last week, very first thing we're going to do is just ask about their business. What kind of business do you have? Um, how did you get started? Why did you get started? I always think is a really interesting question because there's all different kinds of reasons why owners start their own business or take over a business from another family member, like their parents or something like that. Well, why did you want to do that? And did you consider doing other things? And, and also asking owners what's great about their business. Instead of saying, what's the problem you're here for me to solve? Mm -hmm. Maybe I will take a few minutes and just find out what your business does really well where it sur sort of surpasses everyone else. Where does it have a great competitive advantage? Why do you think your business has been successful? And just find out what they think about that. Those are things that business owners can talk about pretty easily. And, and, to, and to sort of get the ball rolling and, and really understand how they feel about their business, how they got to where they are, before I start asking about, well, what does the future look like for your business has been really helpful. And we were talking earlier and I said that the, the times that I, you know, maybe was in a hurry 
or maybe thought I knew where it was going and I skipped these kind of preliminary steps, I, the, it didn't go as well. The clients didn't trust me as much. They didn't feel that I cared as much about their business. It doesn't take very long to take these steps to back up and find out who they are, uh, how, how they got to where they are and how they feel about their business it doesn't take a lot of minutes. It's not a big time investment, but the times that I skipped over that and thought, let's just get to it. What are we here to do? It just didn't go as well. There turned out to be things that I just didn't fundamentally understand about those people. And then what I've found over the years of talking with many, you know, hundreds of advisors is that those of us who are fundamentally genuinely interested in business tend to have the most clients yeah. because we just think it's really interesting and and no two businesses are the same and I can compare the thing you're telling me to all of the other business owners that I know and I can ask intelligent questions because I had a client once who's kind of in a related business. Do you do this as well or do you not do that? And just the genuine curiosity and interest in what they do is something that I think, you know, for example, they're not that like, mm, I don't know if I should say this out loud, but it's kind of too late. I'm going to say it anyway. Um, they're not as likely to get that at their bank. You know, if you go to the bank, we have our banking relationship. They just don't seem to care no. what we do or why we do it or why we think it's fun. So, but yeah. other people do. And, and, so, and so if I'm the one who says, I think that's really interesting, then we've started off on the right foot. You gr agree? Yeah, I, I not only agree, but I would say even if we're not talking about exit planning, which of course this podcast is all about. Even if a client, if an owner calls up and says, hey, I've been referred you to do an estate plan, or my CPA thinks I need to do some financial planning. Um, the immediate reaction of most advisors, me included, uh, when I was practicing law a thousand years ago, was, okay, let's find out a little bit about the owner and then Let's talk about estate planning. Let's talk about what I can do to help them get that estate plan done. Let's start asking questions about their assets, their resources, their kids, and move forward and get this thing done. And that does not instill uh, the dynamics you need to develop a relationship. Because you don't know a single thing about the owner's concerns and hopes and wishes for the family, for the business, for herself, and so on. So we just need to spend time at the beginning. Like you said, it might be five minutes, maybe 10 minutes uh, initially. And you can build upon that in ensuing meetings. And again, with the kind of planning our members do, it isn't a two meeting process, which is what it usually is in estate planning. Meet with the client, the prospect, get the information, prepare the documents, have them come back, review it and sign it. We're done. Exit planning is not like that. A good exit planning relationship can last for years, maybe decades, maybe through multiple generations. And that was really, for me, the fulfilling part about doing exit planning as opposed to just estate planning, is you develop that relationship. And you're right. Um, that's what makes the practice fun. That's what makes working with people fun is you can really reach out and help them. I'll give you just a quick story that illustrates this maybe. Let's uh, do it. I, I, I'd, I'd done a lot of planning for a family transferring ownership to two children. Uh, and the dad was a workaholic at first and, and was very pretty protective of the business. But over time, uh, with some of the things we did to get kids more active and take over a little more, uh, a little more, I guess, of the operations. Um, we're having a family meeting with mom, dad, the two kids, and one of the, the daughter spoke up. She said, yeah, I know. And I've got this one problem with my child, as a matter of fact, and she just isn't doing well in school. And so that's the kind of relationship that you develop. So they're kind of ask, asking me for advice because they knew I had kids of what should we do with this child? 
Um, and I was able to give her some advice on a private school she might attend that would make a difference. And about a year later, I was meeting with them and she said, I want you to know you've changed my daughter's life. And so I had a client for life, not because of being an estate planning attorney or an exit planning attorney at that time, but because I helped them with the with a child. That's absolutely right. I had a client call me one time and ask me for help thinking through what they should do with uh, the their situation happened to be that they had rented an RV for a month <laughs> and they were going to have these different, you know, sites in, you know, three different states or something reserved or four places. And they were going to go on this little tour and do this whole thing. And then at the last minute, the RV rental company um, canceled their reservation. Hmm. And this client was livid. And I thought, you know, I don't really know a lot about RV reservation situations. And in fact, I know nothing about that relationship or that business transaction. But since I, you know, help people help businesses solve their problems, this client called me and wanted me to talk through, okay, what are my options for dealing with this RV rental company? And I remember hanging up the phone and thinking, one, I'm definitely not going to bill them for that time because that's just nope. embarrassing. Two, I'm so glad that they feel like I can help them think through this situation. And, you know, and I just had someone last week ask me a question about their pending divorce. I don't know anything about divorce, but, uh, and I certainly have never worked in that area, but because they, you know, I know them on the business side, mm -hmm. they asked this question about an asset, maybe it's in their mind connected to their business situation. And, and those are the people that, that you end up keeping the longest. So yeah. I totally agree with you. We've got more to talk about on this and future, in future episodes, I have some mm -hmm. other sort of tips that I sort of picked up along the way that I think help us get at this, this early stage. We might be out of time for now, but but uh, the, the things that we do in the very beginning of the process, I agree, make all the difference in the world. And that is, and that is why we plan. Do you have other closing comments before we end? Well, of course. Uh, so I think this first part was really, this first podcast of perhaps a series was really just the general how to begin a potential relationship with an owner who's probably wanting to leave his or her business at some point. And it's developing the right relationship because if you don't have a relationship, you're not going to go very far down the planning, planning road. You're going to come to a solutions real fast and it's way too soon. I think as we move forward, we're, we will now talk in ensuing podcasts about what does, what do those first meetings look like when you are settling down to talk about what the owner's concerns are. How do you find out what they are? And what is your response to that? How do you then move forward into an engagement with one or more owners regarding their future in the business or after the business? I agree. So let's do, let's do that in some subsequent conversations and try to build out step by step, sort of plank by plank or brick by brick, the, these sort of really fundamental pieces of building a planning relationship and a client relationship because it is the key to everything. I agree. That's why we plan a little bit. All right. Well, thank you, John. I appreciate you being here today. And I will see you next time for the next episode and further lessons learned from the, pra the business planning practice.